my name is Glenn Wong. I'm an attorney in the United States. I'm a professor in the School of Management. Uh, my expertise is uh, sports law. The program that I'm involved with is a program in sport management. We have a bachelor's degree program, a master's de degree program, and an MBA. Well, this is a record number for us. Yeah. We're, uh, I think, in the mid 700s. And, uh, you know, we were, I was just talking to some other members of the board, and we used to be happy when we w would get 300 participants. Really? And uh, this is the first year that we've had over 700. Uh, so we are very, very happy with the turnout. And, and I think it's, it's really a, a credit to the board and to the people who put the conference together. We try to find the issues that are on the cutting edge and are relevant today. And then we try to bring in some of the top practitioners as well as some of the people in, 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 in sports law education uh, to be on these panels and, and we found that to be a very very good mix and <clears throat> the audience is very interested both in the learning aspect as well as trying to take some of these ideas and apply them to their practices or in some instances younger lawyers who want to get into sports law can actually see what lawyers are doing uh, when they're practicing. I've been on the board for about 15 years, and a year ago I was, I was selected to be the president-elect, and at the end of the conference, uh, this weekend I will be, become the president of the Sports Lawyers Association for the next two years. First of all, I would let everyone know that sports law is very, very difficult to get into, um, and that maybe a person shouldn't put all of his or her eggs into that basket and maybe work in some other areas of the law. I think some things that are very important for people to do is to, number one, figure out what they're interested in good in doing, uh, as well as looking at what the marketplace might, might look like. Um, you know, there's a lot more people that are interested to work in a professional team here in the United States. I think, for example, just playing the odds is probably more opportunities if someone's interested in college sports or in some other areas. Um, I think it's also important for someone then when they've identified that is to try to get some experience. Uh, understanding that sports businesses are not usually large organizations. They're not usually assistant general counsel positions or associate general counsel positions. So people are generally hired when they have some experience. So getting some experience in a particular area, whether it be contracts or antitrust or intellectual property, as an attorney, and then being able to go to a sports organization and say, I have an expertise that will fit what you're doing. Um, what they should do, in, is, is, in addition to that, is possibly supplement their legal work with some occasional sports work, and also to continue to network at, or, at conferences such as this so that when there are job openings, uh, it always helps when someone who's hiring can put a, a name and a face together. I think they have to do both. I think, you know, like anything else in life, you really have to go all out or go all in. And I think that's the case. I'll say this about this conference. I mean, I've, I have been involved in sports law for 30 plus years. You know, I come to this conference and listen to some of these speakers and I'm still learning things. And this whole field is developing so quickly, I think anyone is making a mistake if they think they know everything. I think it, it, the, the more that you can read, the more conferences that you can go to, the more presentations that you can hear, you never know whether you're going to learn something that may be helpful or useful to your business, your practice, or to your career.